In this video, I'm taking a deeper look into the annualized failure rates or AFR data of a variety of four to eight terabyte drive models from HGST, Seagate and Western Digital. As in previous videos, this is based on data of around 430,000 drives used by Backblaze, a cloud backup provider, over a period of around 10 and a half years. I won't labor this too long as watchers of my channel will already know this, but if you haven't, I have a few videos visualizing various characteristics around this data and showing how the drives and drive manufacturers compare for reliability. There is a huge amount of anecdotal commentary on these drives, which are good or bad, and going to a large source of real data really shines a light on what's actually going on. AFR numbers reveal the likelihood of any given disk failing over the course of a single year, and this number changes as drives age. I covered AFR and the typical drive failure bathtub curve in my previous video, so go check that out. But in that video, I looked at the AFR stats for the larger capacity drives from 10 to 16 terabytes from these vendors, as well as from Toshiba, uh, but those were all enterprise units. But the four to eight terabyte drives in the Backblaze data are really interesting as firstly, they have a lot more days on them, a lot more age, but also there's a real mix of both consumer and enterprise disks. So we get to see how these compare in terms of reliability. Does the difference in warranty period really translate into a reliability differences or is it purely a cost consideration when assigning a warranty period to the disks? In this analysis, I won't be including Toshiba and that is simply because the, of the 96,000 drives in the data set that fall between four and eight terabytes, only 276 of those are Toshiba disks and they fall across four models. So there isn't enough data there to produce solid AFR numbers on those drives. Here is a breakdown of what we'll be looking at today and we have consumer and enterprise disks from Seagate and HGST who are a subsidiary of Western Digital and a NAS disk from Western Digital. In total we're looking at nine models with nearly 95,000 units and there's a little under 5 billion hours of drive time so this is a great pool of data to form the analysis on. Once we've looked at the data I will summarize the findings in the conclusions but there were 23 models in this data set with counts ranging from 1 to 425 units and I've excluded those as the samples were too small and these were collectively only 1,642 drives. AFR gives the best numbers when the data set is large and most of the models have pretty good sample sizes to base my conclusions on but there will be one exception and that is for the Western Digital Red 6 terabyte drive which only has around 500 units but I'm going to include it as it's the largest WD disk by deployment in the data so I think its inclusion adds some value. So let's dive into the data and here we have an overview of the various drives we're going to look at today along with the model numbers, capacity and the unit counts. Drives in grey are HGST units, those in green are Seagates and the blue line here is our Western Digital Red 6 terabyte disk. Starting with the four drives from Seagate, three of which consume units and one that is an enterprise model. Firstly, there's a four terabyte desktop hard disk, the ST4000DM Treble Zero. This is a consumer desktop unit with a workload rate limit of just 55 terabytes a year and it comes with a two year warranty. The datasheet reports it has a target power on hours of only 2400 hours, which if powered on for only four hours a day would give less than two years of life, but it doesn't appear that exceeding the number obviously impacts the warranty. Seagate don't appear to quote an AFR number for this drive but what we see here is that there's a higher failure rate in the first year which is typical and then the drive seems to maintain a really consistent 2.5% AFR up to the oldest drives which at this point are around eight and a half years old. If we look at the deployment graph we can see that it took Backblaze three years to deploy these drives and nearly half were removed during 2018 and 2019. The remaining half are going to be between seven and a half and eight and a half years old at this point. Next we look at the 6 terabyte desktop disk, the ST6000DX001. Again, it's a consumer disk, but I couldn't find a data sheet for this disk, so I'm going to assume it has the same details as the previous. The higher initial failure rate falls to 1.5% in just under a year, and it does settle down to around 1% after 3 years, and then slowly actually it drops below that, with the oldest drive now being 8 years old. The deployment data just show that all these disks were deployed starting around 2015 with half being decommissioned around four years later but the remaining disks approximately 50 percent of these are now all over eight years old this disk has a smaller sample at just under 2000 units but again it's quite impressive survivability then we look at the eight terabyte desktop drive the st8000 dm002 and this has the same specs as the four terabyte unit there are around 10,000 of these and they have an improved initial afr 
After early failures, it falls to below 2% AFR in just a few weeks and then to around 1% after two years. And then it starts to creep up again once the drive passes five years of age. But at seven years old, AFR is still less than 1.5%. The deployment graph shows that they were all deployed back in 2016 and there have been no significant decommissions. So 90% of these drives do remain in service after seven years and failure numbers are starting to increase significantly in 2023. And finally for Seagate, we look at the ST8000 NM0055. Now this is an Exos 7E8 enterprise capacity disc with a quoted AFR of 0.44% and a five year warranty. Now there are around 13,700 of these deployed and despite the fact it's an enterprise drive, it has similar but generally slightly worse AFR history than its eight terabyte desktop cousin. Again, the deployment graph shows all of these were deployed back in 2017 and failures were pretty consistent but increasing after four years with a more rapid increase after year six. So now let's move on to the HGST units and my other analysis in this series revealed that HGST units are generally really solid. So we're going to start with the HD25C 4TB Death Star unit. They don't quote an AFR, but the datasheet does state that it's designed for 24 by 7, but with a low duty cycle. These appear to come with a three year warranty, but again, the datasheet isn't really explicit about this. So there's about 2,700 or so deployed and the AFR settles below 1.5% after a year and it continues to fall below 1% consistently after five years. However, the deployment graph does tell us what's really going on and that is that only 0.2% of these drives remain in service after 2018. So these drives were almost entirely decommissioned at five years of age and only six of the 2,700 units remain. The next drive is an HMS5C Megascale DC 4 terabyte enterprise unit. Now these discs came with a three year warranty and they don't quote an AFR number, but they do state 24 by seven operation with an MTBF of around 800,000 hours. So this can calculate down to about 1.1% AFR on the data sheet. So the drive settles to less than 1% AFR after one year. And even at nine years, it's still sitting at 0.5. These drives were primarily deployed during 2014 with a couple of thousand in 2017, bringing the total to around 8,900 units. And more than half of these were then decommissioned around 2018, but it's unclear why as the drive was proving very reliable. The remaining 4,000 drives continue to stay reliable after nine years. And the next drive, it's the same model actually as the previous, but it's the BLE variant. And this just means that it's an iteration on the drive generation. So it's fundamentally the same drive uh, with the same specs. Um, and there are 16,000 of these deployed from 2014 to 2017. The drive has almost identical AFR performance, probably as very little has changed in the unit. And in fact, has a very slightly better AFR up to the same nine year time frame. On the deployment graph, we can see that around 10% of these units were removed at the start of 2019, but that the rest continue and they show excellent reliability. And finally for HGST, we have an Ultrastar HE8 model. Now this is our first Helium model here, but it's not the first Helium drive that was released as this was the HE6. AFR is not as good as the previous mega scale drives, but it drops to 1% after one year and it stays in that range for the current five and a half year deployment span. The deployment graph does reveal that Backblaze had a sample of 45 of these drives for three years. And because the max life of the drives in the data is five and a half years, we can tell that all of those samples were decommissioned, likely in March 2019. So finally, we have a Cameo appearance from Western Digital. Now I could have excluded this drive as it has a smaller deploy base of just around 500 units, but as it's the only WD drive here and the red range of NASDAQ, has been a common drive to deploy in home and SMB NAS units, I've included it. The disc is a WD Red 6 terabyte CMR drive, and I actually run quite a few of these discs personally. This disc also doesn't state an AFR, but with a stated MTBF of a million hours and with 24 by seven operation, this calculates out to about 0.88% AFR. Now the actual AFR starts high and it never really gets below 4%, which is by far the worst in this data set. We can also see that all of these discs were removed again after just four years back in 2019 and actually Backblaze have only just started to buy WD again, which you can learn more about in my analysis of the 10 terabyte size discs. So let's get to my conclusions and I think it's really interesting. But before I do, this is a great time to hit the like button if this was interesting or useful or consider subscribing to my channel to see more of my content. This really helps signal to YouTube to share this with others and my channel is small, so it's a huge help and I do really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Seagate are mostly around the 1 to 1.5% AFR range, which is still really impressive after 7 to 8 years, especially as the majority of those units are desktop drives. The Enterprise disc here, the Exos 78, also isn't any better than the desktop units, though the 5 year warranty does mean you can replace any failures you do get longer than the desktop units. So, HGST do seem to have the best disc for reliability again with the four best performing AFR graphs here and this is true for the one HGST desktop unit though all of those drives were really removed after five years. The one Western Digital drive here does look pretty bad though it's a pretty small sample that may have arrived in a single shipment so it is possible the drives were a bad batch or they suffered from poor treatment on their way. My personal experience of that drive has been good um, and this is an excellent example of how individual experiences can vary greatly from the larger scale statistical analysis. So overall my main takeaway is that you will get a better warranty with enterprise discs but historical data shows that the desktop units are actually just as good for longevity and AFR rates. It's likely that they are the same physical units with changes to firmware to optimize for certain duty types but that the warranty is more likely a financial factor for the manufacturers. They can sell desktop drives more cheaply if they don't have the same risk of funding replacements. So thank you everyone for watching to the end and I will see you in the next.